Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen here with Linda Armstrong, and this is your Daily Dose of Happy. We're so happy you decided to join us today. Rita Giganti is taking the day off to spend time with her spouse, uh, but uh, she'll be back uh, next week. And in the meantime, we're going to uh, carry on with our usual Friday routine. Um, just a little quick uh, piece of news. It's kind of exciting. We've been talking for the longest time. Starting back in July, when Rita, in the midst of doing some readings for our listeners, turned to me and said, I got a message for you, Walt. You should be doing a, you should be owning your own radio station. Well, I think most of our listeners now know how that's progressed. And our TV show that is going to appear on local cable access starts this Monday. It is already in the box, in the can, as they used to say. Uh, they already have the first two episodes. I'm in the process of loading the other three up, so we'll have a whole week and, it's a new era, Linda. It's a new time. It's a new, new stuff is happening. And largely it because you and Rita kind of said, go for it. <laughs> so thank you very much. You're welcome. We, yeah. We're just, we're just edging you to where you were going anyway. I guess so. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, in fact, I was talking about it a bit. I was on uh, another person's podcast today, Debbie Garcia, really fascinating person. Um, she and I and Daniel Mangana, and others appeared on David Strickle's summit a couple weekends ago. And so that's when I got to know her. And uh, we had a really fun time on her podcast today. And I was telling her about being on uh, cable. And as, as I was telling her that, I was getting goosebumps. It's like, this is really different. I mean, there are lots of things that people are doing these days to get their podcasts out there, find more listeners and so forth. I don't know of anyone who's going through cable TV. I mean, it's pretty rare. So yeah, I feel like right. we're breaking ground here. All right, cool. <laughs> I don't know where it's going to go, but it, hey, you know, it's, it's fun. It's LOA today, right? We're yeah. You're just following the energy. You're putting it out there and it's coming back. Yeah, that's what's happening. It's exactly what's happening. So, yeah, good stuff. Um, we we uh, had kind of uh, been tossing a couple ideas around in terms of a topic. Rita sent a, a topic idea our way, and I'm not sure where we're going to go. Um, but I wanted to bring something up first and just see what you think. Um I've been giving a lot of thought lately to the nature of what source energy feels like. And you've led us through a number of different things where we can uh, basically connect to and feel our energy, uh, meditations and so forth. And those were among my first experiences in actually feeling energy. Um, but I've been giving it even more thought and thinking about something that Abraham Hicks taught that I picked up a few years ago, which is the idea that, when we are connected, which is all the time, of course, but when we are, uh, let's just say, aware of our connection through our emotions, um, whenever we're feeling and experiencing an emotion and, and, and feeling what it feels like, if it's what we call a, quote, positive emotion, um, it means that we are in alignment with what our inner being wants and, and believes for us. They, they basically want what, what we're wanting, what they desire, what we're what we're pursuing, when we're not feeling good, we're out of alignment with that. And I kept thinking about that, and I realized whenever we are feeling anything, you know, experiencing any emotion in a tactile way, I don't know about you, I think this is probably true for most people. I tend to feel it like from my face down through my chest. It, you know, it could be happiness, it could be embarrassment, it could be joy, it could be anger. I mean, whatever the emotion is, and they all feel different, but I feel them palpably on the front side of my body, on my skin primarily, but also deeper too. Uh, and I, I kind of get the sense other people have something similar going on there. And it occurred to me, what I'm really feeling there is source energy. I hadn't really thought of it that way, but I'm feeling source energy. And so I, I just kind of wanted to toss that out and think, you know, like, well, is that what you think is going on here? Is, is Am I actually feeling source energy? And what are some of the other ways we, we feel and connect with source energy? Well, it's interesting because, you know, we are part of source energy, so it's always flowing through us right. all the time anyway. So you're kind of feeling, uh, you're not even talking about just when you're in alignment. You're saying any any emotion on the entire scale, right. you're saying you feel it in the front of your body, and is that you feeling source? Yeah. I don't know. I, I look at it more like that's just you feeling you and what's happening in the world that you've created. Okay. Because for me, I know when I feel like I'm really tuned into source, um, I don't, that feeling, I don't have that feeling when I'm like in anger. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I 
it's a different thing. It's like the anger or the um, whatever it could be, grief, despair, any of those lower vibrations. To me, I'm just I'm not I'm not in alignment with source. Then I'm out of alignment, and I'm feeling those lower. And I, and do I feel them in my body? Um, yeah, yeah, I suppose so. I suppose the body is helping me to feel that, but it's more maybe. It's a combination. It's the energy and the body. So, because yeah, me, that's no, it's the, the no, yeah, no. I guess it is the body more because sometimes, sometimes you'll have a feeling come over you and you don't know what it is. Yeah. Now, and that's usually a lower vibe for me. All right. I'm okay. okay. What is this that I'm feeling? So I'm obviously feeling it. But it's a fine line, though, because we are spirit. So are you feeling it in in just the vibration, or are you feeling it? in the physical cells, right? What's the difference? But they go hand in hand. Yeah. It's just, where's your awareness? My awareness. So, okay, that's, maybe that's a good point right there. Um, when I know when I'm in the, when I feel really totally connected, I'm in a higher vibe, right? Yeah. I'm more, I'm more full of light. And when I'm in a lower energy, um, it feel it's denser. Right, the body is dense. Absolutely. You know, so you yeah. so you feel it. You're feeling it there because I definitely do feel that in the body, and the higher vibes. Yeah, I guess you. I feel. It, yeah, you, well, you have a body. That's for us to be able to experience this. It's like when um Esther was she walking a dog or something, and or, or when she was noticing birds, when she noticed them in a different way, like she felt elated, and it's because Abraham joined their energy with her. Do you remember that right. story? Yes, long, I do. long, long time ago. Yeah. Um. And she felt everything so much um, more of a heightened sense of feeling because right. they were coming through her body, right? Yes. To right. experience it the way she experiences it in the physical, even though they're non-physical. So, yeah, it goes hand in hand. But definitely for me, I think uh, part of what you were saying earlier, when something is in alignment, uh, it's, like the, it's like the light and the heavy, right? So you feel lighter, right? You feel energized. You feel, uh, for me, when something's really in alignment, it's like head to toe goosebumps just all through my body. Like, whoa, okay. I'm on, I'm on target here. Like spirits letting me know through the sensation in my body that yeah, this is the way to go. Yes. Right. I get that. I, I totally agree with that. That makes sense to me. I guess what I'm asking is if source energy is really the source of, Everything that's created, basically all matter came from source energy originally through a thought and belief process and a creation process. Then literally all of this is source energy anyway. So I guess we could, in that sense, say everything we experience is experiencing source energy. I, and I guess I'm kind of taking it uh, one step further in saying if emotions are a way of measuring how in or out of alignment we are, and like you said, different emotions feel quite differently. I mean, the, the higher emotions feel almost like elation compared to the lower emotions. Uh, I'm wondering if just by feeling how it feels within the body, not only is it telling us what whether we're in alignment, and not only is it telling us whether we are um, whether we're feeling a, 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 an emotion that reflects what we like, and, or an emotion that feels what we don't like, it's almost like it's a gauge that tells us. Not only are you less or more connected, but here's how much more or how much less. It, it, it feels like that kind of thing, like like it's it's a lever. It's more open here, less open there, and, and it's like it's like a meter. It's you know you have a meter that bends this way when you're in the low end of the scale and bends that way when you're in the upper end of the scale. And that's what I was kind of tapping into this idea that these emotions really are they, they're kind of precise in what they're telling you. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. oh for sure. Oh, well, there's that weird echo again, because we had that last week with Harold. Did you notice that? Yeah, that? That's my cat trying to scratch to get inside the door. Oh, was it? Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. But did you notice all that kind of feedback we oh, had with yeah. Harold she's, last week? She's been persistent. She's been quite persistent. She She's oh. not liking the latest uh, set of restrictions, but that's another story. <laughs> um, so when you were saying all that, it made me think of, uh, and, and first I just thought, oh, yeah, you hear about these people who feel like they can feel that, that they are that chair, they can feel whatever, right? Because they're just feeling their energy into the energy of this other stuff, right? But then, and then I, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. But then I have a client who was just telling me the other day, and this person's just going through this awakening, and all this stuff is opening up for her. 
Mm-hmm. And she's like, I go outside. She goes, and I almost can't, I almost lose myself. Like I feel that I'm the tree. Like I feel the tree. And I'm like, mm-hmm. you know, she thinks she's crazy. I'm like, so cool. You know? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even but, do but, that for eight years. You got there in your first week. Wow. <laughs> she's like, but I, if I tell anyone, they're going to, they're going to lock me up. I'm like, no, listen, it's, 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 it's good. It's really good. You're just really opening up, you know? Um, but you can feel that. Like you can feel that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's you know? true. If we just, if we just put our attention on it or our focus on it, I mean, look, you feel someone else's pain. Sure. You feel someone else's joy. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, so why not why not why not feel the trees and the things in a way that you've never done before like they just were there and now all of a sudden it's like i am it you know it's like because she, she's opening up to that and we all have those type of experiences when our vibration's really high right yes when we you can call it in the zone or whatever people yeah. call it you know um you feel that it's just it's just open and aware and actually very light because it's such a high vibration yeah that's true and i think that's one of the reasons why we like to be in that higher vibe place because it's so evident and it's so easy it's like everything just goes easy there there's no work at any of it it's just easy and because it's our true nature we're like oh i'm home oh this is me oh this is me right yeah true yeah yeah, it feels it, it has that resonance. We use that word, right? It has that resonance inside that feels like, oh, that just feels so right. Yeah, it just feels so yeah, right. It just feels so right. It feels so normal, natural. What you know? And then you're like, well, why can't I feel it all the time? You know, <laughs> because you chose you chose not to. <laughs> you wouldn't be in this body right now. now as I mentioned earlier, um, we are appearing now on local cable access which is really cool um and people who are tuning in there are are seeing us for the first time so this is the first time they're seeing you you linda and they'll see rita next time she's on the show um let's take a moment to just kind of talk about what source energy is for somebody who's not really you know well tuned into what law of attraction is all about and so forth so because a lot of these people listening it's relatively new to them. They, they may have a Christian background where they know about sowing and reaping. Maybe they heard about the secret at some point, but that's about it. Well, I mean, source energy is the energy that, that is the everything or that makes up the everything. So, so people have different words for that, right? So we're saying source. Some people will say God. Mm-hmm. And then some people won't like you saying it's God and that we're all a part of it because some people see that as separate to them, right? Sure, yeah. So, but that's just everybody has their different perception. Right. Um, the universe, this energy that expands forever and ever and ever and ever, right? And and something creates all of it. It that's that source energy. Like, where right. did it all come from? It's kind of like the question. Well, what does this mean? Where did this come? From? We're always looking for the source, the beginning of it all. Um, I don't know if I'm going off on a tangent there. If that's really what your question was answering. Well, it's a good tangent, though. It's time to go with it. Yeah, because because that's what's coming through. It's kind of like that's a good word source. Right? Yeah, it is. Because we're always looking for that, right? So some people might think it's outside of them and might think that it, you know, and and it is. Like I'm not saying that. Well, I don't know what I'm saying, really. What is God? I don't know for sure. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, it's like is it, well, is God is that that. That's energy that then we decided to splinter off, like supposedly, right? Decided to splinter off to be able to experience more. Mm-hmm. So that's why we're like a part of that source because we're just bits and pieces of it. Now, I had um, one friend of mine, a psychic, who was telling me, like, she, she says that if all energy is 100%, only 20% is what's in the body. The other 80% is outside of your body. And does that make up your your guides? Quite possibly, right? Your higher self, your guides, this guidance that comes to you is like you guiding yourself many times because your energy is not the parts that we know of that are here that have chosen to have, to grow through the different limitations or to be creative as to how to deal with all of this mist matter energy space and time like the stuff that is man-made even it's not even it's nature too right it's all of it Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. But we're experiencing all of that, which kind of, you know, I don't know, maybe I sound a little, I don't even know if I make sense today. It's weird. But when we were just talking about being the chair, like feeling your energy. Actually, I've known people have an experience like that where they just had this thing where they can feel like they're, that they were part of, I've even had it where you feel, yeah, okay, this is why I know it. But you <laughs> feel like, and it could be when you're meditating or it could just be, it could even be sometimes when something really good happens and you just feel yourself so open and alive mm. and you're connecting to everything around you. It's like, yeah. Yeah. You notice if you walk into your house or somewhere when you're really feeling great, like the whole place is vibrating, feeling great. Mm -hmm. It's like mirroring it back to you. Right. And it probably always is. But if we come home in a really bad energy, we just can't see it. Or we're getting mirrored back to us the energy that we're feeling, which is a low energy and not feeling good energy. So the house feels low. It doesn't feel good at all. Well, and, and it's created by us because we can't right. see past to what we truly are, which is like, okay, so on 20%, I don't really know the 100, but we visit it now and then when we're really keyed out, like really like open or like in the zone or however many ways people might say that. Um, I remember my first black belt test, like I didn't, I, I was so aware I had to fight with this person. I was so aware, like everything was slow motion because I was in that, that state where maybe some athletes call it the zone. I don't know. But where you're just aware of everything. So was I tapping into the other 80%? Like right there, right then, you know? I mean, how many times have you had it where time seems like it, it stopped? Right. Where, where in this split second, so much happened. And it, hap it seems like it happens in slow motion. But still, it's the same amount of time. It's like... Right now, that was it. Boom, boom, right? Or you do that and you realize all these different things that were going on in that same little unit of time. Mm -hmm. Have you experienced that? Usually uh, you experience that when something is like when your life's in danger or something like that. Yeah, oh, sure, yeah. But but you can also experience it in more, you know, common mundane situations. And I was just thinking of one that happened. I, I haven't played golf in, in probably 20, 25 years. But I remember one of the last times I played, I was playing solo, I was playing alone, and I don't even remember what course it was, but I came up to a hole that had obviously been marked out for a driving contest. But the hole was about 320 yards long, and you could see, it was, it was almost like a gridiron of a football field. You could see where the markers were, and you could see where they were numbered, and I thought, well, this is interesting. I mean, how often do you get a chance to find out how far you actually drive the ball? So I figured, let's take the time and you know see if I can really drive the ball. And now this was long before I knew anything about law of attraction, long before I knew about source energy, but I had heard about um, what martial arts teachers call chi or ki. And I, I didn't really know anything about it other than that I'd heard about it, but I had kind of a vague idea of how it works. So I said, I'm going to see if I can apply it here in my swing. So I took a couple of swings and then I just became very slow and deliberate and I experienced what you were just describing, how everything just slows right down. Now, anyone who's ever seen a, a golf swing knows there's a certain pace to it and so forth. And mine probably is pretty normal compared to most people. But when I took that particular swing, it felt like it took about three to four times longer than normal. I'm sure it wasn't. I'm sure it was the normal swing, especially when I saw the result of the ball. But it felt really, really slow. The other sensation that I had, this is one I'd actually been aiming for for years because a teacher, who had, a golf teacher, had once tried to teach me how to hold the club so you're just holding on to it. So, so it doesn't go flying out of your hands, but you're not gripping it tightly um, as a way to get optimum uh, control and optimum power. And I was trying to do that. And literally, as I'm coming through the ball, it felt like the club was going to go flying out of my hands. I was like holding on for dear life. <laughs> and when I looked up after hitting the ball, the ball was farther than I'd ever hit in my life. I mean, and this was before metal clubs, by the way. I was using an old wood style driver. So I didn't have even the advantage of a, of a metal driver. And I think I hit the ball 290. I've never hit a ball that far with a wooden driver. I'd probably hit, uh, I'm going to guess 250 was probably my top distance 
And I just stood there in amazement watching it, in part because I couldn't believe how far it went, and in part because even the flight of the ball was slow. It just mm-hmm. hung up there and hung up there and just stayed. It was like this bird floating, floating. And I just kind of saw You it. were, you were the ball, you know. It's I like was. Everything I was, was connected. The ball. <laughs> yeah. No, really. Well, when, you were, when you were describing that, that's exactly what came to my mind. Like, oh, yeah, I remember that feeling. That was quite an amazing feeling. It was yeah, fun. You know, maybe it is that we just, we just expand into that bigger, into more of the truth of who we are and beyond. And, and it's a whole different perspective. Mm. than when we're here in this, right here, inside here and operating based on this very second and the next one and the next one. Right. I, I might have shared it with you before, but I'll share it now because it, it goes along with it. Uh, and when I lived in California, my husband and his brother were building cars, uh, Lamborghini Countach replicas, Ooh. but they built them from the ground up. They, they're the like chassis, like wow. they're all American parts, yeah. the body. They had a, a mold for the body and they, and they made the whole thing. Right. Um, so project. they were testing out the rolling chassis. Right. So. Okay. Like a, it's like an oversized go kart, right? Because it's the yeah. chassis for this Lamborghini. Right now, the seats weren't even put in yet, right? They were just checking, you know, some mechanisms on how it all was. Well, you could, could drive it. So he and another guy, who was what our salesman, were in it, and I think the one there was the seat wasn't bolted, and the other one was a crate or something like that, right? <laughs> something on the one of the rear wheels snapped. Okay, and they were you know coming down this road and. It caused it caused the car to 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 do like a you know like three sixty one or two of them wow. in the air wow. took out a tree oh my just goodness. missed the corner of the building right Whoa. landed in a parking lot they were fine but in the in that you picture it, boom boom that happens fast right yeah the car's already going fast and you're down well right. my husband said it was like forever. He goes, and the guy, the the guy who's in the car, the salesman. So he's he's this happens, and he's got his hands on the wheel, and he looks over, and this guy is like, he's gonna get up and get out. (laughs) He was gonna get up and out, and so my husband had to grab him and put him back in the seat, right, and land. And he said it seemed like for like everything was slow motion. Yeah. Meanwhile, it happened like that. Yeah. Right. So wow. when you have those experiences, what? You just expand it into more of that energy that is the source of all things. And you're maybe and you're seeing it without time. Because time supposedly is just what we may what we agree to it. That time doesn't exist in the spirit world. Right, right. You know? It's like you're out, you're in. Uh, how long are we out? Who the hell knows? Is it like <laughs> Like a hundred Earth years? Was it like a month? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> so when you have people who who are taken to their in between lives, you know, because there's people who do that. Um, I can try and think of the name of some Destiny of Souls. There's a couple of different books there. Michael Spencer, I think his name. I can look at my phone, where he's through hypnosis taking people back to the in between life times and what okay. what was going on, what they were learning, and, and different. And Rita's probably knows a lot of this stuff as well. Um, you know, like the things that you're doing in spirit before you actually decide to come back into a body or whatever it might be. I've never heard. I've heard it, of, uh, you know, people who do past live experiences and so forth. I've never heard of between lives. That's oh, pretty awesome. Yeah. I, I'm going to, I'm going to pull it up this book. Yeah. Um, so cause I don't know why I'm blanking on it right now. Oh, that's all right. I mean, just the fact that you mentioned that is is fascinating to me. Um, and, and what we're talking about, it, it, well, it makes sense on, on a really uh, strong level for me, just because source energy. I mean, we were talking about what that is. That's what that's what creates everything. Everything is made from the energy that we call source, and we are creators using that source energy. I mean, that's what law of attraction is all about. It's about using the basic ability that we all have to attract stuff into our lives as a form, as a creation tool, kind of like a, you know, a sculptor would use a knife or, a, or you know, some sort of a sculpting tool. Um, so since we are uh, creators and we're connected to 
the source itself, which is, itself is also creation. Um, and I'm also going to draw upon uh, teachers like Neville Goddard who point out that God or source is actually consciousness. So, okay, so this source energy that we're talking about is conscious. Everything's conscious. conscious. You know, they got this whole consciousness thing going on there. Well, yeah, now all of a sudden I'm asking myself, Second, if everything yeah. is slowing down while, we, while we're going through one of these events that you and I have been describing. Is that us connecting into the wider level of consciousness? Yeah, it's expanding. I mean, it's all about expansion, right? Mm-hmm. And so when we when we are um, meditating, you do feel yourself go into that expanded state, and you can feel yourself. We've done it here on the show, right? And just yeah. feel yourself expanding out more and more. My body's here, mm-hmm. but my energy is like stretching out and yeah. out and out and out. Um, here, let me just do this. Where's oh, my... oh, that's the Destiny of Souls by Michael oh. Newton, PhD. Okay. Yeah, he has a couple of books. Okay. And, and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people who he take he's taken through, I guess hypnosis, and tapping into in the in between lives and what happened there, and hierarchies and yeah, it's pretty it's pretty amazing. The, the more that we talk about this kind of stuff related to law of attraction, related to source energy, related to us as conscious creators, the more fascinating it becomes. I mean, I've been talking about it now for eight years on this podcast, and I'm still blown away by stuff. It's the same topic all these years, and I'm still blown away. It's crazy. <laughs> and, and, because, and there's an example, right? Because, number one, we're, cre- we're creative, yep. and it expands. It's expansion. Consciousness expands, right? That's the awakening right now. A lot of people are, like, bringing in... Be, seeing more awakening, bringing in more, whether it's within their own physical body and in their own lives of what they sense, but you can you see it going out and out and out and out. I wanted to ask you about something else too, because this came up in that other podcast that I told you earlier that I'd done earlier today with Debbie Garcia. Um, Cause she'd asked me a question. I don't even remember what the question was. And I had responded kind of along these lines that we're talking about here. And I, I had, volunteered the idea that in my own case, my enlightenment, I, I always kind of resist that idea because I've never had like phew, the light switch goes on. Oh, I'm enlightened. That, that's not what it's been. It's been more like this long, slow process of seeing a little bit more, feeling a little bit more, noticing a little bit more, you know, calling it enlightenment is, is almost too slow <laughs> because it just has taken so long to get there. And, and I guess the question I wanted to ask you is in your experience, what's the more common pattern? Is it more, common for people to turn on like a light switch or is it much more slow or is it in between or what is it for most people because you, I, you I do think, a lot of work with people on this kind of stuff i think maybe the more common is more of a slower pattern where you don't really understand what's happening and then you start searching for what is this but some people like this one client i'm working with now it just boom happened wow no uh, and like she's got it scared her a little bit at first too because like she'll wake up and she'll feel all this vibration like her body vibrating and lights coming in and She's like, I don't know what this is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so. I think if it happened that way to me, it probably would have been too much of a shock for me to, to handle. And I probably, it, it may even have happened for me. And I just dismissed it because I couldn't handle it. Because yeah. I have had incidents come up, you know, incidents where I thought that I was you know, approached by a presence or something like that, uh, especially in the middle of the night. And they just, they startled me so much. It's like I was pushing them away. I couldn't handle it. It was more than my senses could could deal with. So yeah. probably the slow approach was, was probably the best one for me anyway. Maybe maybe that's true for a lot of people. You know, it comes to each of, of us, however, it's supposed to. But, you know, the word enlightened, if you think about it, you're just bringing in light. So as we're awakening and expanding our consciousness, we're bringing in more light. Mm-hmm. So yeah. we're, we're you know, like, yeah, I don't know if anybody can say they are enlightened. I, I, to me, I think you wouldn't be in a really in a body at that point. You know, we're just still Probably taking not. in more. We're always evolving and growing and becoming lighter and lighter. You could say in that sense. Um, and it's weird because if you ever have an energy healing session and like there was something really going on and you and you feel really heavy and down. And then you have this healing session and you leave like you're springing up off the table like, oh, my God, I feel like I lost five, ten pounds mm-hmm. in an hour. Mm-hmm. Right. You didn't lose physical weight, but right. you feel so much lighter. 
Yeah. Like, I love that. That's the, that's the one thing most people will say. I'm like, well, how do you feel? I, I don't know. I feel like I'm lighter. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like a, the first time it happens, they don't understand what that is, you know? And then they come back for more because, hey, I want to feel light again. <laughs> well, I, I recall the first time that you kind of let us here on the podcast through a session like that. And you asked me afterward how, how it felt. And I don't really honestly remember what I said, but lighter could have been an accurate description. I think probably, I, I probably just said something like, it just feels really good because it did feel really good. It, it felt like, you know, my whole emotional state had lifted by about 20 degrees or something like that. Okay, so that you did it by degrees. Some people might do it by, as if they lost, because you can't put it into words. It's like, I don't know, like I lost 20 pounds. I, like, I feel lighter. I don't know how to explain right, it. Right. <laughs> but it is, it's like open. It, maybe that's a better word. You just feel like expanded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Jenny in the live stream added something about uh, what you were talking about. It's the, um, the guy who does between Michael life Newton. regressions. Mm -hmm. um, she mentions Many Lives, Many Masters by Brian Weiss. Apparently, yeah. he also touches on the period between lives. Are you familiar with him? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I guess there are a few people who have... There, there's, there, there's plenty of people talking about it. He's I not the know. only guy. He's just the one that came to my mind because I, I have I have one of his books. Right, right. right. There. I mean, there's another book we talk about here that I love, which is um, Your Soul's Plan. And... That was one guy who has clients. He had his own awakening, and he's helping them through what's going on in their lives. And they pull in these psychics who see the between life, the, the pre-birth planning. Oh. Wow. I'll find the picture of that one if anybody wants to see it. So, um, you know, because we come here with a plan, and we choose the people who are going to be there and help us to carry it out. I just had a very interesting visceral reaction to that. Because okay. for the longest time, I've, well, first of all, for, for a long time, I just doubted that there was any plan because my life was so chaotic. Why would I call that a plan? But then there was a time when I said, well, if there was a plan, I wish I had known what it was because that way at least I could make some sense out of what was going on in my life. And then you point out, well, here's somebody who's able to find out psychically what the plan was. My reaction was, I don't want to know what the plan is. <laughs> you don't want to know the plan? That, what? That, that's what it is right now. That's the way I was feeling right now. So like this whole cycle of, you know, this range of, of possible responses that I've gone through over time. But you just said, I don't want to know the plan? Yeah. That's why you don't know. I guess. <laughs> you yeah, don't apparently. Want to know. <laughs> All right, let me let me get this this cover up so you can see what that looks like. It's gonna yes. Start playing. Okay. Let me click on that. Oh, Josie also I, asked a question. She said, "Did you?" I don't know the the connection here. Um, maybe maybe this is just something that that's uh, not directly relevant to what we're talking about. But she says, "Did you see Michael Lennox's recent interview with Michael Sandler?" No. No, I don't know what that is either. So sorry, Josie. Your soul's, soul's plan. plan. Robert Schwartz. Okay. Uh, I, I'll read that part. It says, uh, discovering the real meaning of the life you planned before you were born. Okay. And this book is really cool. And they go through like 11 different stories, real people's stories. And, you know, and one, one example, and I'll probably blow it. I'm probably chump. I always mess up stories. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but I know the gist of it. Um, it's been a while since I listened. This one girl who uh, in this lifetime... Okay, I'll tell you just, I'll tell you this. In the pre-birth planning, she was choosing this one soul who was going to be her father in this life, in her okay. present life, and that his contract with her would be that he is to be, to to sexually abuse her. Oh, jeez. Wow. So so that soul is like, no, I, I'm not going to do that. And And she pleaded with him that he was the only one who she could have do that for her because whatever it was she needed to get from that. Right. Wow. And so he, he only agreed to do it if she would forgive him in this present lifetime. And so she agreed. Right. Meanwhile, that's what happened to this woman. Oh she forgave, God. she forgave her father. Right. That, that's what played out. So now, and the, you know, the psychic they bring in doesn't know what this person's story is. They're just tapping into her pre-birth planning. And, and there's like 11 stories like that where they tell the person so many of the things that have happened in their life and how they and how they chose it. And and well, then you see what the outcomes were like in each case, probably in each case, you see how it benefited them. 
Well, maybe. I mean, that, that's going to be for a lot of people to hear that. That's going to be a tough thing to just hear that that that's what this person got. I mean, whoa. Well, I, mean, I, I, I don't remember what she got from it. I mean, maybe, who knows? I don't remember what it was. Compassion. I, I don't know. Forgiveness. I don't know what, what she had to learn. I don't remember that part of the yeah. story. But there was another one, another story where this woman was getting her boss's mail and there was a pipe bomb in, in the mail and she got blown up. Oh my God. Right? She was like pinned to the wall. She survived and she actually forgave him before she even came conscious. Like they tell, talk oh my- about this whole story. That woman went on in her life here on earth to um, inspire and teach people all over all over the world she talked to you know thousands and thousands of people with her story and how you overcome or forgiveness i don't remember what the story wow. is what her purpose was but it came through that experience yeah well boy though yeah. that's, that's so, you know, for, for the for the new list design cable that this what, what we're talking about here is really really advanced stuff here this is because it's so <laughs> well, emotionally it's all in the book. But I'll tell you what that book, what, why that book really helped me a lot too is because, um, uh, many years ago we had a, a, you know, I teach karate. We had a karate, little student, five year old brainstem tumor. Oh my. And she was getting bad or whatever. Two years, she finally, she actually passed at age seven. Oh, and yeah. I remember at that time thinking, there's no God. How can God do this to little kids? You know, yeah. I was, mm, mm, I didn't get it. Well, I did remember, though, that everyone at her services would talk about how much she taught them. So many people had stories about what they got through her journey, how it made, how it helped, how she helped them through Mm. her journey. Look, I have goosebumps right now. See, it's in alignment. Spirit's like, yeah. (laughs) Anyway, after listening to this book, I'm like, oh, of course, that's she came here for that purpose. Because look at how many people she helped through her experience. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, that book, that's a really good book. If you're, like, new to all of this, it might really open open things up for you. Well, it's, it's Destiny probably, of Souls? Probably not, it's probably not something I would send somebody to initially. I'd say learn some of the, the, the more basic stuff first because, I mean, that's a, a big emotional step. That's one of the hardest things to learn yeah. is how, do you, how right. do you deal with people who you, you hate or you feel have harmed you or whatever. That, that's that's fairly amazing. You know what? I, I, would, I would say that if, if somebody's hearing this right now, then it's right up their alley. <laughs> well, probably, you know? yeah. Because you, we can we only assume from our own experience how it took us a while to come to this, where some people are like, oh, now it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I would say possible. Destiny of Souls would be one I would do after maybe Souls Plan, because <laughs> that one's a little hard to take um, at some points in, in Destiny of Souls. Yeah. But... You know what? It's all just information, right? We draw upon information. Well, that's And true. then you feel, how does this feel? This feels like total crap? No, okay. Then you don't pay attention to it. Don't pay attention to it. Yeah, move on to something else. You're right. That That is the way to handle anything that we're we're looking at when we look at this stuff. Um, to basically ask, does it resonate? If it resonates, then it means you need to look at it some more. That's what I found. Every time that I looked at something that resonated more closely, I got so much more out of it. On the yeah. rare occasion where I tried to look at something that didn't resonate, actually what happened more than anything else, more often, I just got bored real fast. Like, I just didn't want to look at it anymore. Not even interested. Yeah. 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 So, right. so this, if, if it, yeah, you're not going to pick it up if it does, there isn't some reason for you to, to listen or look or sure. whatever, you know. Um, well, you just follow what feels right. I mean, that's the whole thing. We We have, we know the plan. Not consciously, but it's in there. <laughs> <laughs> What's well, so, I don't want to know what the plan is. <laughs> and that's why something, yes, yeah, see, you didn't, if you wanted to know, you'd know more of it. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. Right? For you, it's more like, no, I'll just have fun figuring it out as I go along. <laughs> Which is not what I originally thought would happen, but apparently that's what it is for me. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, for me, my first reaction would be, yeah, tell me more. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, tell me more. I'll take it all in and I'll see what feels right. So that's the thing. We always want to see what, you know, what resonates, what feels right, mm-hmm. what makes you feel lighter, you know, because then, you know, okay, that's, that feels expansive for me. Then it, it must be good for me. And if, it it feels like that, it's, if it feels a little like, mm, 
Then Move on like, to the next um, thing. Yeah. Or maybe just not now. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. It might be something for much later. That's true. Yeah. And plus there's something else that uh, David Strickle, um, who does the stream of David, uh, he said it in the last episode he appeared on with us. And others have said it too, but it just stuck with me that he said it. Just because we're putting this information out there doesn't mean that people who are hearing it are going to be ready for it. I mean, it's just part of it. We never really know for sure who's going to be tuning in at any one given point in time. And right. that's fine. That's okay. Yeah. And you know what's cool, too, about that is the fact that they even heard it could mean that there's a part of it that is true for them so that when they come to it, when they're more ready, they'll be like, oh, yeah, I remember I heard something like that years ago, but I wasn't ready to hear it yet. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. you probably have those experiences like, oh, yeah. That's what that person was talking about. Yeah. Like, well, well, actually, David told a story about he had that experience. David, okay. uh, David channels what he calls the stream of David. It's very similar to his, an Abraham Hicks channeling or whatever. And he had heard about Abraham Hicks. Now, he was able to do this stuff from a very young age. He didn't really know what it was. He had no name for it. He, had, he, he didn't know how to label the various things he was experiencing. But he did learn how to kind of interact with it pretty young. And, uh, which was a good thing because apparently his parents basically didn't give him any help at all with anything. So he kind of needed it to get through life. Um, and then later on, he heard somebody pointed out to him about Abraham Hicks and it, the whole idea just turned him off. And so he just forgot about it. And then later on beyond that, after he'd been through quite a bit of life experience and was starting to consider becoming a channel, somebody mentioned to him again. And that time it resonated. So very much the same thing you're talking about. The first time around, nope, not having anything to do with it. Second time around, oh, yeah, I should really listen to that. Yeah, mm. totally. That's the way it works. That's, that's the <laughs> other nice thing, too. But you, you often talk about um, the energy that comes our way, the energy, the energetic messages and so forth. And they, they don't just come once, do they? they? They just keep coming until we do something with it, either – Put it aside, it's okay. <laughs> whatever. They just keep coming. <laughs> yeah, if there's something you need to know, or that, you know that you need to be made aware of. It's going to come many different ways, and then you're like, "Oh, okay, yeah, I'll pay attention to that now." Yeah, right. <laughs> I got, I got a new deck that I'm enjoying. It's um, Kyle Gray, Angel Guy. Okay. Angel yeah, Guy Oracle our, Book. Lynn is our, our resident angel card drawers so we often do that on on the shows that she and reader are on um he's a young guy he's out in wales i think young guy he's he's been talking to angels his whole life <laughs> so i'm always impressed by these people who put the card decks together and i'm thinking some of them have some pretty good artistic skills because some of the artwork is beautiful absolutely yeah. beautiful um actually if you went to his website and you got on his email list he'll send out uh on mondays he sends out a weekly card and he'll put pull one from this current deck. He has a couple of different decks and he'll show the, the, uh, you know, what, what he channeled, what the writing is about the card. But then he also shows the artwork in production. It's not him. It's another artist that's it's doing the artwork artist. for him. Okay. Uh, and that's kind of neat because yeah, the artwork is always pretty amazing. All right. So let's see what, what the, what card would help and, and for my tuning it, into this. I mean, you, you've pulled probably, I don't know, 10, 12, 14 different decks out of various times. Um, to pull cards from. And for whatever reason, I have a bias in favor of the ones that have beautiful artwork like this one. I, as soon as I see that, it's just like, yes. I don't even know what the card says yet. I just like the artwork. It feels good. Nick, did you read the card? What, is it, what does it say? I can't see it. Yes. Oh, <laughs> it says yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's, that's poor right. Eyesight. I, I was saying yes, even though I couldn't see that the card said yes. <laughs> so, you know, it's a new car. You know, I don't, re- I don't know what he's going to say about that. But, you know, that is the one, the only word the universe has in its vocabulary. True. Yeah. Yes. Right? I am successful. Yes, you're successful. I'm a failure. Yes, you're a failure. Yeah. It's like whatever you put out there, and that's what this show is all about, right? Right. It's the law of attraction. Whatever you put out there, you're going to get back. The universe says yes. That I'll never be able to do that. that. Yes, that was- you'll never be able to do it. That was a really big lesson for me early on as I was studying all this stuff and learning about it, because I remember uh, when I went through my teachings and my learning uh, in the Christian church that I was part of, I remember them talking about 
you know, prayers being answered and are all prayers answered? And you, you got various takes on it. The most common take I heard was, um, yes, all prayers are answered, but sometimes the answer is no. And that never really felt right to me, but I didn't question it because I didn't know what to do with it. So when I later learned, and I actually learned it again through Abraham Hicks, that always your, your, your inner child, your inner being, whatever you want to call it, your inner connection is saying yes to everything that you're doing. The answer is always yes. And that the only reason things don't work is because we're the ones who are saying no, we're the ones who are negating it. That made so much more sense to me. And it, yeah. it fits in perfectly with what you're saying there. The answer is always yes. Just be careful what you're asking for because <laughs> you're going to get whatever it is. <laughs> um, you know who I heard it from was T. Harv Ecker. T. Harv Ecker, I did one of his. Now, T. Harv Ecker, his book, you would know it. Uh, yeah, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. Oh, okay. Very, very famous book. So he did a lot of courses on, like, manifesting money basically more towards money even though it's a lot more than that he does right. a lot of spiritual stuff but he's where i first heard that oh, okay. and he does it in a very funny way he's like the universe knows one word yes <laughs> <laughs> yes so you know that's kind of fun because that to me like just summed it all up yeah yeah it does it, well it also it makes sense out of it. It used to be nonsensical with, with the other answers that I got. None of them made sense. Finally, life, the universe, and everything made sense for the first time just by having that bit of information. But the answer is always yes. So let's, see what he, let's see what, what he channeled here for this okay. this angel card. Yeah, well, so, okay, you pulled the yes card. we got to find out what it actually says. So it says, this, this is your message here. Yes, yes, yes. The answer is yes. So if you had a question in mind of something that you're thinking about these days, like should I go and do this or whatever that might be, this is coming to you as yes. It says proceed, go forth, achieve, enjoy, don't hold back. The time is now. Rise up, fly, light up, express yourself, experience, and share. So, yeah, the year 2020 is really finding out what is that is our yes to go for, you know, what really lights us up. That's We're all in the process of figuring that out in a deeper way and even like so for me i know what what i'm here to do and it so now it's just coming in even stronger and, I'm, and, I'm, and i'm having that reflected to me because i have more and more people coming to me that, that's a really important point and i want to expand on it a bit because most people when they look at 2020 2020 2020 2020 so far <laughs> <laughs> when they look at 2020 so far they're going to say can I do this year over again? It's been terrible. It's been one bad thing after another. The list, you know, the COVID, the race riot, you know, the whole thing. They're just going to go through that huge list. And now here you're saying, well, you know, the answer has always been yes. What are you talking about? The answer is always yes. I got all the stuff I didn't want. And the reason I mentioned that is one of the key concepts where law of attraction, conscious creation, all this is concerned is that before you can get Anything that you want in your life, you have to know what you don't want. It has to start with what you don't want. So the clarity you're talking about is this huge list of things that we don't want. Okay? Right. That's great. Now we know that. Now the next step is asking, well, if that's what I don't want, what do I want? Because that, that's what you're referring to here. That's where the answer is yes. Yeah. And if you, I mean, everyone I talk to is finding that they want to go more towards what what they really, what really lights them up, mm -hmm. you know, and, and this whole COVID and all this other stuff is kind of bringing that up for them. Yeah. Now we can go even further with the whole thing with the vibration of the planet rising as more and more light comes to the planet. And as more light comes, it churns up all the darkness so it can be released. Like that's what it's all about. It's bringing it up so it can be seen. And there's a lot of things behind the scenes we didn't see before, but we're starting to learn about and see it now. Why? So that it can be dissolved. In whatever ways that happens, we'll have to see. But it is just more and more. And it, so it's happening big, and it's happening within us. And it's not we're like seeing. it's going to be the end of all things negative, because that's not the way it works. We're, we're talking about what's going on with the current cycle, so to speak. 
But the fact is we came into this life to experience all this contrast. It's, we aren't here to avoid it. It's, it's just part of why we're here. Well, and we can't, you're describing is how we're learning to not only cope with it, but to triumph with it. To and maybe we, it maybe we came here now through all of this so we can see where it's leading us. And where so it's we can be us. part of that magnificent change, right? Yeah. Yeah. Where everything goes back to love, you know, yeah. love. Like, yes, we're all connected. So I'll read the rest of it. There was something else that came up, and I don't remember what it was. It'll, if it's important, it'll come back. Okay. Okay. So it says, this card is a huge thumbs up. If you're making a decision, the answer is yes. Go <laughs> for it. This is a time for positivity, celebration, and progress. And it's, a, it's a great card right now for people to hear them because – if you let yourself get too caught up in all the stuff out there that feels so heavy, you're denying yourself from finding out what what is well what's well where's the light within me? Mm. You no, know? and the more I look at all that stuff out there, is it pulling me out of my light? Yes, yeah, yeah, it is. So we want to keep coming back, and that's that 2020 inner vision. It's coming. It's us deciding to be selfish in the way of finding out what really lights us up and you know, what's really important to us and what things. Make us have that lighter feeling. Do more of that. Yeah. And those things that give you that heavy feeling, you know, look at it and then walk away from it. And, th and that is the beauty of, the, of what we're talking about here because everybody can go inside, right? It's not like it, it, you don't have to have a special skill set. You don't need a degree. You don't need to have a license. You just go inside. And that's where you're going to find all this stuff we're talking about. Yeah. It makes it easy. And so maybe you ask yourself, what things would I say yes to? There's a question. <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah. Instead of looking at. Especially, especially in the midst of all the craziness. If you're finding, and I know a lot of people who are, if they're finding themselves weighed down by all the craziness, you got to ask that question. Otherwise, you can't avoid the craziness anymore. Yeah. yeah. Look for what lights you up. Yeah. Okay. So, extended message says this. Okay, we did that already. Let me see. All right. So, it says go for it. This is a time of prosper, uh, positivity. Celebration and progress. Angels are encouraging you to let in the light and enjoy it. All of your hard work is paying off. Any endeavors, projects, and opportunities before you now are getting the green light. Well, look at, I know my business is really growing. Look, you're, you're expanding, right? We're getting yeah. these green lights. If you've been holding off for the right time, the time is now. And you're being encouraged to take the next steps. You're good to go. If you're feeling scared or worried, that's okay. Invite in help. Angels are there to guide you, and they want to be part of your success. So relax, experience, and enjoy all that is unfolding for you now. Really good. It, it also like brings that. to mind a, a key point. We've heard this from lots of different teachers, not just in our realm, but you know, success realm, self-help books, all that kind of thing. People talking about how some of the best, most most amazing business successes have happened during economic downturns. Some of the most amazing breakthroughs have happened during the worst parts of people's lives. And it, it, it's one of those things that can seem, I don't know, contradictory. Like, how could that possibly be? But when you understand that you have to ask what it is I don't like before I can ask what it is I, I do like, you need the contrast in order to ask that question. Then it starts to make more sense. So now what you said now, now it starts to make a real Huge amount of sense. What is it that I really want? What is it that I would want to say yes to? What would feel good to me? It's absolutely the best time. There's no better time to ask, ask a question like that than right now. Yeah, and then you look back at your own life and you see all of the times, you know, like I remember being engaged and that fell apart. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, right. Because <laughs> I wouldn't be with the, the guy I'm married to now for I, I lose track of the years. I don't even know how many years it is. Like 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 31 years. Yeah. So, you know, I didn't think it was great at the time. But, boy, when you look at it back from, from this perspective, it's an entirely different deal. Yeah. That perspective, that, that's really another big piece of what we talk about a lot here. Trying to understand not just the purpose of perspective, but to gain it, to gain, okay, well, what's the perspective that's going to help me the most? And, of course, the times we tend to ask that are when we're struggling with stuff. But that's a good time to ask. That's probably the best time to ask, really. So, we've got time for maybe one more card if you got a, a card to draw. 
Why are you doing that? We're, I'm going to do We're a, almost near the end already? We're near the end. Yeah, we got like five minutes left, and that's about oh, it. Oh, wow. Yeah. That fast. It flew. I, that's why I want to make sure I get the promo message in. That is. Okay, uh, I'll shuffle up while you do your promo. Okay. So um, for those of you, particularly if you're new to the show, especially for the people who are watching us on cable access, um, if you are interested in learning more or if you'd like to just have access to some more materials, we have an LOA Today app you can download. Um, it's available for both the Android and for the iPhones. Uh, just go to the Play Store on Android, to the App Store on iPhone, and do a search for LOA Today, and it'll pop right up and load it in. It's, it's free. You'll be able to access all of our episodes because we do episodes five days a week. You'll also be able to access a list of what we call goodies, which are all the, the cool things that our co-hosts have contributed to the app. Linda contributed a course that she created using videos called High Vibe Living. That's on here. There's also Dan Mangana's Money Game and Cindy Chavez uh, with her uh, Guide to Soulmate Success and, and, and a number of things that are on there. And they're all totally free. And it's a great way to kind of get get your handle on what it is we're talking about here on the show, particularly if you're interested in thinking you might want to watch this some more. So you know, download the LOA Today app and, and join the fun. So what do you got? Uh, this is fun because we got Sacred Pool. Okay. Okay. That's usual, a beautiful but, picture. But we got it in reverse. Okay. <laughs> important. But, and, and for people who aren't used to the cards, why is that important? It's just the message is different whether it comes to you upright or in reverse. Okay. And it doesn't mean reverse is negative. Sometimes reverse are better messages than upright. Good to remember. Okay. So, but this is, listen to the description of this card. All right. The world is a reflection of your thoughts, feelings, and beliefs. Embody the love you wish to see in the world. Yeah. Right? Right. If everything is a matrix, like what, and, and, and it is as above, so below, like what you see out there is something's going on inside here. We've done, we've done shows on that and that could be a, a, just another show all by itself. Absolutely. But anyway, Absolutely. let's read this one. So in reverse, it says it can be difficult to overcome denial when there is a reward for staying where you are. If you can't accept and love yourself, you remain trapped, wearing a false mask of victimhood. The benefit of embracing denial and the victim's mask is that you never have to take a real risk. No kidding. Dimming your light serves no one. Turning away from the truth is, a refle is reflected in the stillness of the sacred pool, and it keeps you in denial doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Such vain efforts lead to a tedious, boring existence. Take the risk and shine your beautiful light into the world. I mean, I just did two videos. I did my, my November um, energy update, and mm -hmm. then there was, like, I was having this throat thing, and it's, uh, I feel it a little bit now because it's about this expressing, and allowing yourself to express your truth out into the world. Like, now's the time to shine your light. It's like what this card's talking about a bit here. Okay. Um, and here it comes up in this card. So it says, take the risk and shine your beautiful light into the world. Look in the mirror and see your truth. That's, that's the whole two videos I just did. Beautiful. It's like the truth will set you free, your truth. So it says, surrender the need to self-sabotage. Remember that you have a responsibility, not just to yourself, but to the divine spark within you. Courage is not the absence of fear. Accept the discomfort of seeing with clear eyes, and you'll soon find that wondrous adventures are waiting for you. Step into your magical life. Take the leap of faith. See, and that to me sums up even this whole entire year, right? It's Correct. like, yeah, take a leap of faith. Move into something. Finally honor yourself. Finally allow yourself to go with what you really want. And some, you know, it might not be easy to do it because you're like, but I, you know, I hate my job. I really want to do this, but you can't just go cold turkey. Of course not. But you can work your way into it, you know, and you can ask always your guides, angels for support, the universe, God, whatever you want to call all of that source. And, and with that, we're completely out of time. But thank you. This has been wonderful as usual. We'll look forward to having Rita join us again uh, next week when, when we do the show one more time. And in the meantime, we'll just say we'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye.